Hello ladies and gentlemen. I am here to talk about referendums on independence and why it is legitimate that people have a right to have a say. Now, in a number of countries, it is considered to be illegal or even seditious to have a vote to ascertain what people actually want. In Hong Kong, we know that is the case. And recently in uh, Spain or Catalonia, when there was a referendum, um, it was declared illegal. Now, obviously, if you have a referendum, it has to be in accordance with the rule. We all believe in the rule of law, and there have to be reasonable rules um, before you have a vote on independence. However, there is a difference between having a binding referendum or just having a referendum where you're trying to ascertain what people think. Now, it is fundamentally in a democracy that we have a balance of opinions. If we take one of the most classical books in the history of political philosophy, John Stuart Mill's book on liberty, then the whole thrust of this book is that there has to be, as he called, a balance of, of opinion. He says, on every subject on which differences of opinion is possible, the truth depends on a balance to be truck, struck between two sets of conflicting reasons. Now, in order to have that balance, that dialectics, we might call it if we're academics, you need to allow people to have a say. And that's why, when there was a whole discussion about whether there should be referendums on independence, in the former Yugoslav republics. The Badinter Commission, named after the former French Justice Minister Badinter, um, a great man, by the way, who, who was responsible for a number of reforms in France, they then said, well, it is right and proper that the people are asked what they think. Now, that wouldn't necessarily be a binding referendum because there are no provisions for that, but it is important that people have a say, that people are given a right to voice their opinions. Because if people are not given the right, the right to voice their opinions, then there cannot be a balancing of views and no policy can reflect the people. Allowing people a say in a referendum does not mean you allow people to just willy-nilly go off and declare independence here and there. It just means that we find out what people actually think about a subject. And that is in the essence of democracy. That is in the essence of the right to expression. So a referendum and a vote is not a binding thing. It can be under certain circumstances. But it is a way of ascertaining what people actually think about a particular subject. One of the things I have been writing recently and with colleagues in this book on, uh, on re nationalism, referendums and democracy is about this conflict between independence referendums and, and democracy and, and nationalism. This chasm that we sometimes see between these uh, concepts, if you like, these beliefs. But what is absolutely fundamental is that you allow people to voice their opinion. If we look at the Canadian case, which we discuss at some length in the book, uh, the Re-Quebec Re case, then the Supreme Court of Canada found that a referendum could not be illegal as such, as it was called in Spain on a number of occasions, because a referendum was a way, among many other things in the judgment, a referendum was a way in which you could ascertain the views of the people. So I think if we're looking at norms for referendums on independence, we should accept that there should be referendums in order to find out what people actually think of a subject. There's nothing seditious about that. It is just ascertaining what people think. So at the moment in, in, in India, people, some people in Punjab want to have a referendum. The Indian government are prosecuting these people just because they have an opinion. So if there's anything that is fundamental to democracy, if there's any reason why we have democracy at all, it is this utilitarian thing that it allows different opinions to be voiced. And without different opinions, without this battle of ideas, we cannot weed out the untruth from the truth. So therefore, allowing people a say, not a binding say necessarily, 
just allowing people to say is good democratic practice. And I think that ought to be recognised by the international community. And as the Padinta Commission showed, it is being recognised. Thank you very much for letting me speak to this conference.